Good morning, guys. Uh, how is everyone doing today? Welcome back to another episode of Five Things Learned After City's very disappointing 2-1 defeat against Chelsea. <laughs> Typical City still alive and well, of course. Um, slightly reassuring in its own weird way, I guess. But either way, today I'm going to pull through this game in a little bit more detail. I'm the dentist pulling the teeth out that no one wants to no one wants to go through today, but sometimes we have to go through that. But don't forget, if you want to help support this channel a tiny little bit and dive further into the world of football, and Manchester City. Go and download one football right now in the link in the description below. Um, you put a smile on this slightly cynical blues face today if you don't mind helping the channel a tiny bit. It's a fantastic app, of course. Over 10 million people use it and it costs absolutely zero pounds, zero pence. It's free but and it's absolutely brilliant as well. All the stats and all the news and all the transfer information from around the world of football. So go download it right now in the link in the description. Uh, it's wonderful, I promise you. But, um, we're going to start today with the <laughs> with the realization that Sergio Aguero is uh, he's human. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm a lot calmer today than I was last night. Um, I was very annoyed by that um, that miss, that incident. It definitely did trigger me, um, and I immediately felt guilty for being annoyed at Sergio when he tweeted out an apology. I was like, "Oh, it's all right, Sergio. Don't worry about it, man." And I meant that um, genuinely. Like, I think everyone was entitled to feel frustrated last night because I think many of us had like if not literally, metaphorically had champagne on ice expecting City and hoping City would win the league and it felt very possible and, and I think that moment last night, um, I think it, it incited a billion and ten emotions um, uh, which really got to people. I think it made us frustrated that we weren't going to win the league. It made us frustrated that uh, Sergio was messing about. I think it made us frustrated that maybe Sergio just blown his chances of being involved in other games now. Um, it just, it, I think it just it touched a lot of nerves and everyone was rightfully upset I guess. Um, but what I will say is um, he's only human, I guess. Uh, and in the cold light of the next day, and um, you can uh, look at it and thinking, well, he made a mistake, I think, actually, because he loves Manchester City. And sometimes um, when you care about something so much, your ego can take control a little bit and you want to try and impress the people that you care about, if that makes sense. So while I think I think he was thinking about his own legacy a little bit and trying to be the match winner and looking really cool, he was only doing that because he wants to go off on a high note because he cares about his club, if that makes sense. I'm pretty certain there's an element of that to it. Um, I might be giving him more credit than he deserves there, but I think he deserves that credit, at least personally. I think he deserves that distinction because, you know, we're all human and we all make mistakes. Um... It's not, he's not hurt, harmed anyone or anything like that. He's not a criminal, you know. It was just a silly little penalty. Um, but that is life, you know. You make a mistake. Uh, the apology was a, an unnecessary but sweet touch. You didn't need to do that. It was only Mr. Penalty, man. I know it was a bit silly, but you, you, it wasn't even needed, Sergio. And we all love him. And I guess the point is now is that... Um, I understand frustrations because I was certainly frustrated last night. But I guess at this point we have to go, well, it happened... It doesn't change anything. We love you loads still, Sergio. You are human like the rest of us. And maybe seeing this, um, uh, <laughs> that he's got a flawed, um, flawed, pretend, flawed sides like the rest of us and he's only human and can make big mistakes. Well, I guess in some way it makes um, everything he's achieved at Manchester City feel a little bit more special if you want to kind of go really deep into it because he showed that despite being human like the rest of us, you can still be that brilliant. Um, love you, Sergio. You're only human, but we'll forgive you for that uh, because why wouldn't we? You're an absolute legend. Um, second thing, I personally took is that the final 11 um, well the Champions League final 11 uh, becomes an awful lot clearer we can see clearly now uh, the rain has gone <laughs> quoted some is that a 90s song who knows either way uh, we can see clearer now I mean I think we know that um, every pretty much everyone on the pitch uh, apart from maybe one or two yesterday a couple maybe yeah I would say well, max two or three. Um, we know they're not going to be involved in the final. Like we we know exactly what the final is going to be because certain players have had some chances, but they it doesn't look like they're going to take him. I know it's not fully fair on some of them because some of them. I was playing in a system that was a little bit weird. It was an incredibly weird system. I'm going to get onto that in a little bit. Um, but I, I think it's fair to say Sterling, Jesus, Aguero, Ferran Torres, um, Mendy, maybe even Cancelo. Um, I, I, maybe even Laporte as well to an extent. Not Laporte did anything wrong, by the way, but I, I feel like I think he has to do even more. Like when you try to get in the final, and Stones has been so brilliant in the Champions League final uh, uh, knockout stages, you have to be perfect. And Laporte wasn't bad yesterday, but he wasn't perfect. And um, I, I'm not labouring on Laporte for any particular reason. I'm just saying he's probably the ones where it's even closer cut, um, and even he might struggle to get into it because of the bad blood from this game, unfortunately. Um, though I don't blame him for the for yesterday at all in the slightest. I guess the point I'm making is that certain players, 
Uh, we, we, we know the players that were rested are almost certainly going to start because he doesn't like these players uh, uh, are going to be able to force their way in. It's not because they're bad footballers, it's because they are where they are in this stage of the season in terms of squad status because they are the ones that are slightly out of form who have got more questions to answer, I guess, and that's how it is. And I think Cancelo will be a little bit disappointed as well because Cancelo is a very, very good footballer. At one point, like he's going to be the best right back in the league and he's slightly dropped off recently. He's not terrible by any stretch, but he's definitely a bit underwhelming in my personal opinion. So I, don't, I think he's got... A I don't think he's got much of a chance at the moment of either dislodging uh, Kyle Walker or even Cancelo even being totally uh, Cancelo or Zinchenko even being honest which is a bit of a shame because you, you would hope for a little bit more fight but certain players I don't think they've got enough and like even Rodri I think uh, Ferner's grip on that position is probably tightened even more now and that's not because Rodri's a bad player but I feel like Ferner's just I feel like Guardiola will trust him a little bit more um on that man though, uh, the third thing we learned is Pep is always gonna pep man. Like there's always there's always a galaxy brain moment with Pep. Um, I, I, it's weird because I, I I'm torn between understanding what he did yesterday and also disagreeing with what he did yesterday. Football, eh? opinions, uh, <laughs> we've all got them. Um, uh, but I. I <laughs> I, I find it slightly comforting that Pep can still find these ways to be incredibly frustrating despite having one of our best seasons of all time. Um, but I was a little bit annoyed yesterday. I think overall, I'm still slightly set to annoyed about what Pep did because I don't think it was necessary. I mean, on one side, I, I was sort of thinking, well, some of these players probably are in a little bit more pain and tired than we realise because even though some of them haven't actually played that much football recently, genuinely, when you look at it, and it was, it was a few days ago now that we played as well, um, so they were kicked to pieces against PSG. Like, I mean, the amount of players rolling around holding their ankles after the PSG game, because, um, no, sorry, during the PSG game, because PSG lost their minds a little bit and they were kicking them to pieces. Uh, maybe there's a few players who are a bit more tired or a, bit more, a little bit more pain than we realised. Having said that, the, uh, if he's thinking about injuries, it was weird then for him to also play maybe the two of the most fundamentally important players to our system in Edison and Diaz. So it was like you, he rested certain players, but then played some would argue two of our most important players. So it's like, well, what is the logic behind that? Is you think those ones are less likely to get injured? Diaz plays more like more games than pretty much anyone. So surely he would have been a high risk. So if he was all right to risk those two, why was it not all right to risk some of the others? Does that make sense? So it's a bit confusing, basically. That's the point I'm making is some mixed messages there. And I think one thing that I'm frustrated about Pep going to Pep is a little bit now because we've given Chelsea a slightly um, easier running, I guess. Because I want them to be uh, still uh, having to go for the Champions League spots and keep playing games and maybe, you know, having to play a stronger team and be a little bit less, um, you know, a little bit less fresh when it came to the final. But... Um, but that's not happened now. We basically made one too many changes, maybe a few too many changes. I personally but probably would have gone for um, a slightly stronger side than this. I, I probably would have played Foden and Bernardo. Um, with, maybe Foden and Bernardo would have played for me. Possibly Gundogan as well. Um, even with De Bruyne arrested, I think that still would have been enough. Uh, I think that would have been fine. Uh, that would have been a massive difference to the team. Uh, I, I don't understand. I don't mind, mind a few changes, but I just think a slightly stronger team would have been enough. But either way, Pep's always going to Pep, and that's life. Sometimes you have to take with Pep's mad moments. His ego, he's got an ego for a reason because he's a genius, but sometimes, as a flip side, we'll see moments like that. Um, the fourth thing we learned is it looks like it's a home celebration thing um, for everyone involved in Manchester City. Uh, I, a lot of my frustration was more that we were going to have to wait to win the league um, yesterday. But I still think it's probably going to happen now this week isn't it because United's fixtures they've got three games uh, I'm getting the fixtures up here to remind me again of exactly of the timings of him they got three games before we play again. They've got Aston Villa away today, and hopefully, if they lose today, once again, we're champions. Uh, I hope so. I'm, I'm going to be out, so they better not have to lose today. Don't do it today. Then on Tuesday, they've got Leicester. Then on Thursday, they've got Liverpool, which is absolutely insane. So they've got um, three games in five days due to the postponement last week. And it's very, very likely. I mean, all they need to do is... Um, I think a draw is not enough. One draw doesn't make them lose it because a draw means... If they draw today, they're 12 points behind us um, with four left to play. So bang on 12 points to play. So it's very possible, even though pretty much not possible. But it is possible still, technically. Um, so, But either way, it looks like we're going to be all celebrating just sat at home this week, not watching a game together, which is a bit of a shame. Um, looks like the players will be sat you know, at home with their families or whatever, and that's fine. It's a bit of a shame because no one wants a midweek whimper win. You know, That's all it is these days. But we've learned that that's probably going to be likely, that we're going to have to sit there, chill, and hopefully... Um, 
<laughs> hopefully uh, enjoy the moment when it happens be it versus Villa Leicester or Liverpool and uh, you know maybe when it comes to the Newcastle game none of us will care after that we'll be like oh well you know um we won the league. We can just go and enjoy the game. And the final thing we learned is, yeah, we've not really yet shown our hand against Chelsea. I, I don't mean that in like a Mache- Machiavellian kind of like, oh, it's cool, Pep's trying to play tactics here and not show his hand to Thomas Tuchel. I, get, I guess more, we haven't really, literally just haven't seen our strongest city side yet against Chelsea. So we don't really have a barometer um, of potential success. I mean, we know the city side that will play in the final will be very good. So we know they're going to be absolutely brilliant. Um but um, I guess the point I'm making really is that um, uh, it's going to be interesting for us to see the quality between these two sides at the very best. I mean, it's not like we're going to confuse Thomas Tuchel. He's got some of the best football analysts in the world. He's, he knows exactly how Manchester City plays. He's, he's a, a student of Guardiola style. He I was not playing or a strong on having two games against him. Won't make him be confused. He won't be expecting anything other than what he's seen against PSG or Dortmund or whatever. So it's not like it's some genius idea from Guardiola because um, that would be incredibly insulting to Tuchel's intelligence in a way because to suggest that he wouldn't realize that this is not how we're going to play if that makes sense but i guess the point i'm making really is that um we simply um we simply don't know how this team is going to line up against chelsea in the final because we haven't really seen an example yet we know it's lined up sorry we don't know how they'll get on because we haven't seen it which is interesting and it also um i guess it adds an element of well um confidence as well at the same time because we've narrowly lost twice to this chelsea side <laughs> that was hilarious no, you didn't see that, did you? No, that nothing just happened. Uh, Nicola tried not to get camera, and we've nar- narrowly lost to this Chelsea side uh, a couple of times now. Um, but each time, it's been more or less on our own terms. If that makes sense, like we've just rested players, and Chelsea will will be like, "Yeah, we beat them," but oh no, we haven't played. We haven't played. You know, Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden, and Mares, Bernardo, Gundogan on the pitch at the same time. So they won't be taking too much from these results. They'll be happy in the moment, but I guarantee when it comes to the final, they won't feel like they've learned anything, which is an interesting little angle on it, isn't it? Because we don't really know yet. So I guess the point I'm making is that I'm not really nervous about the Chelsea final, despite these defeats, because we've not really shown our hand yet. Guys, they are five things that I personally learned from this game. A game that we'll quickly forget and move on from. Frustrating. Frustrating, definitely, but that is life. Big love to my Patreon producers, Armada Alali and William Pritchard. Absolute legends. Thank you so much for all the support, guys. Um, really, really appreciate it. Uh, it's a frustrating day. It's a slightly grey day. For now, though, I'm going to get out and enjoy the rest of the day and try not to think about football too much. Unless, Villa, up the Villa, up the Villa. Guys, love you all loads. Thank you so much for watching this video. Life does go on. We lost yesterday. A bit frustrating, but that's football, isn't it? We'll be fine. We're going to win the league and win the Champions League final. It'll be good in a bit.